All right, so I've got a lot of comments on PSI or professional services income, and I want to explain the rules associated with PSI, uh, how you can utilize uh, the certain rules in order to get the advantages of a company or a trust. And ultimately, if you find yourself in a position where PSI does apply, uh, how do you make sure that you don't get caught red-handed, so to speak? So comments like this, uh, we absolutely get nailed for having a trust. The ATO has changed rules, especially if you are a professional, such as a, a doctor, a physio, etc. So uh, what this person is referring to is professional services income or PSI. And PSI was introduced because individuals who were professionals uh, basically implemented tax structures uh, in order to try and minimize and control their tax when it was actually themselves that was producing the vast majority of the income. Now I'm gonna show you the rules uh, so we can have a little bit of a conversation about it. So. Personal services income is income that is mainly uh, a reward for an individual's personal efforts and typically 50% uh, from an income source uh, from a particular contract, right? So examples of PSR, uh, PSI are um, income that you receive under a contract which is wholly or mainly for your labor or services, income of a professional services practitioner in a sole practice, income of a professional sports person. So if you are by, described by any of these means, so you're a solopreneur, you're working for yourself, you're trading time for money, um, and you produce that income from a particular source individually, then you are likely not going to be able to benefit from a trust or a company. However, if you're growing and scaling a proper business, so you're a physio, uh, you're a doctor, you've created a practice, you've got multiple people that are working for you that are producing income, even one person, uh, then you have the ability to benefit from these tax structures. This is the additional incentive for you to grow and scale a business. Because firstly, if you're just trading your time for money as a sole trader, and um, then these assets, these asset structures and trusts and whatnot are not necessarily going to benefit you. Um, having a family trust and taking your net proceeds of PSI and utilizing it to build wealth so you've got future flexibility of an investment income is perfectly fine. However, using it to benefit you and your business is not really advantageous. So the idea here is that we want to build a business by owning a system where we can trade other people's time or trading products in order to get leverage over that time or leverage over those products in order to produce profits that are disconnected from your personal exertion directly. Now, of course, it's difficult and it's challenging to grow and scale a business. There's a whole heap of other things that you need to navigate. But using this, like so many people have jumped in saying, PSI, PSI, PSI. Um, if you want to benefit from these structures, you need to understand the rules and you need to apply them appropriately. Pretending to be a victim because you are a solopreneur, you are a professional, and uh, because you don't get the benefits of these things, if you don't like the rules, grow and scale a business. Hire people, um, get more leverage. It's the best way to go to achieve financial freedom anyway. So stop complaining, stop whinging, understand the rules and start using them in your favor. Or if you want to be at the mercy of those particular rules, then don't complain about it. They are what they are.